Hi guys, I hope that you're practicing radical self-care. I hope you're doing really, really well and taking wonderful care of yourself. Um, I hope that you are seeing a trauma therapist. I hope that you're um, going to some, doing some coaching. Um, please feel free to check out my website for coachcat with a K dot O-R-G. I have a course on there to help you to heal from narcissistic abuse as well as learn how to set healthy boundaries and to address codependence. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to talk about is some ways that you can sort of narc proof or narc proof your life or just just be become much more immune to um, some of the strategies that are used by manipulators to suck you into the vortex. And one, you know, one thing that I think is very, very important is to get very clear on what your core values are. And when people are not in congruence and alignment with your core values, then they're probably not somebody that you want in your inner circle. Um, I, I forget who, I was reading somewhere where the five people that you spend the most time with are going to be the ones that really, really strongly influence your life. They're going to be the ones that you're most like. So I would say be very, very picky about the five people that you choose to spend the most time with. Are they people that have integrity? Do they share your core values? Do they value honesty? Are they moral? Do they have empathy? Are they kind to strangers? Do they do, do they do acts of service to help the world become a better place? Are they people that have big, kind, open hearts? Are they honest communicators? You know, you don't want people in your inner circle that are manipulative, passive aggressive, um, you know, abusers. You don't want people that are verbally, psychologically, emotionally, or physically abusive. You want really good people in your inner circle circle. So be very selective about those five people that you're spending the most time with. Um, so yeah, I, I highly recommend 12 step recovery. I highly recommend meditation. If you go onto YouTube and you, um, go into the search feature and you search for, um, meditations to overcome narcissistic abuse, there's a bunch of really good ones. You can also do meditations for PTSD. Um, if you're having trouble with sleep, there's some um, meditations that can help you fall asleep and to cope and deal and heal from your PTSD or your complex PTSD. Highly recommend doing that. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of things that you can do to really um, help to heal yourself. And I really believe some ways to become narc proof is to get very clear on who you are. Who are you? Because if you know who you are and you have good, healthy self-esteem, then you are going to be so less susceptible to somebody who doesn't or who's trying to chip away at your self-esteem or who's trying to get you to buy into their idea of what they think of you, right? If you know who you are, then it doesn't matter what other people think of you. They don't get to tell you how to feel about yourself. You get to do that, right? You get to do that. And if you have a lot of healthy friends around you that love you for who you are, and you're free to be and you get to be yourself you're free to be you know like wes carter talks about free to be me like if you get to just be yourself and you know that you are loved for just being you then you're going to be a lot less susceptible to somebody coming in and telling you that you need to change in order for them to feel okay right in or order for them to accept you you need to mold into this little idea that they have in their fantasy based movie projector that they have of you. So the more confidence that you have, the more that you know who you are, the less susceptible you are going to be to for somebody else to tell you how to think or feel about yourself. And I think that's very important. Um, the more you surround yourself with healthy people, the more obvious it will become if somebody comes into your life and they're not healthy and they're toxic, the, 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 dichotomy, there, the dichotomy there will be much more obvious, right? You'll be like, oh, most people treat me with kindness, respect, they let me be me, they support the things that I love, they support my interests and my goals and things that are you know, different than theirs, but they support them, right? And then there's this one person who's kind of the outlier, this person who isn't supporting my hopes and dreams, who's diminishing me, who's trying to make me feel less than, who's trying to 
tell me how to think or feel or act or, or, or um, behave, right? So you will know if you surround yourself with a lot of people that just allow you to be you and they love you for you, it will be much more obvious when somebody comes along who's trying to craft the narrative of how you should feel or think about yourself, right? Also, just the more confidence that you start to develop, the more self-esteem that you start to cultivate, the less susceptible you are going to be to somebody who thinks it's appropriate to chip away at other people's self-esteem. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I don't like to control other people. Um, I have had issues in the past with codependence and addiction. And back then, I think I did try to control a lot more than I do now. But I, I've gotten to a point through a lot of work where I don't want to control other people. I want people to do their work, to be well. I want me to do my work and to be well. And then we meet together in Rumi's field, you know? Um, I don't want to control other people, but I'm also very sensitive to having, you know, people trying to exert control over me because I know it's not healthy. I know that it's not good for grown people to try to control each other. It just isn't. And if you find yourself, because it's not just narcissists that try to control, codependents control, people that have anxiety, OCD, all sorts of other things people do also try to control. Um, but if you find yourself like trying to control somebody's behavior or change them in order for you to feel okay, that's something to look at. Because if somebody's behavior is so unacceptable that you feel that you need to exert some control over it to change them in order for you to feel okay um, that is not your job and it's best if you find yourself in that situation to let go let them go with God if somebody needs to change their behaviors because they're maybe drinking alcoholically or they're acting out inappropriately and you're trying to change it you're never going to be able to change it and if it's an unacceptable behavior and you can't tolerate it then get out of it stop trying to change or control their behaviors people are only going to change if they want to change and in order to change we have to look inward and we got to go what is my part what am i doing here that's creating this dysfunction in these relationships why do i keep doing the same patterns over and over again and if you're able to start identifying that stuff you got to start working on it. And of course, it's not an overnight matter. I don't expect that we go to therapy, we go to 12 step recovery and all of a sudden we're perfectly fixed. Like it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I have a lot of codependent characteristics. A lot of those I act out in codependence and I have to become aware of that on a daily basis as well. Like, Oh, I'm people pleasing right now. Oh, I'm accommodating. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm diminishing my true self. I'm not being my true self. I'm not being totally honest with this person because I'm people pleasing and I'm trying to make them happy. And I'm feeling like I'm like totally neglecting myself. Right? So, you know, a lot of times we may struggle with those issues if we're codependent. So that's where I, you know, reach out to other people in my 12 step recovery program to help me to be like, Hey, I'm just checking in. Like my codependent brain is telling me this. What do you think? And so like I reach out for support. I work the steps around the codependence. I also um, very much believe in a higher power that helps me with these issues. So um, if you're in a relationship, again, where you're feeling like you need to control somebody or change them in order for you to feel okay, that's a red flag. That's where you have to be like, I need to let go and let God. Like that person is going to do exactly what they're going to do. And I don't have any control over it. And I shouldn't even be wasting any energy trying to control. Right. Um, but if you've been with the controller, narcissists are very controlling, right? So they are trying to control how you think, how you sometimes, how you dress, where you go, who you spend time with, how you think, what your perception is of yourself. And very importantly, they're trying to control what your perception is of them. They want you to buy into their narrative, right? Their narrative that they're superior, they're amazing, they're perfect, they're moral, whatever it is their narrative, whatever mask they're sending to the world, they need you to buy into that mask rather than in healthy relationships where we just organically get to know each other a little bit over time and we're not trying to get anyone to buy into our perception of who we think we are. We're just being us and they can take it or leave it, right? So um, I think it's very important that if you're finding yourself in any sort of dynamic where you're either 
trying to control somebody or somebody's trying to control you, you step back and take a look at it and figure out what your part is and what you can do to manage your own feelings without other people needing to change in order for you to feel okay. So hopefully this was helpful for you and I hope you guys are practicing radical self-care and doing wonderful things to take care of yourself. Have a great day. Bye.